This was an interesting one. So Gary says, I've been experimenting with the Orton effect to get that ethereal glow you sometimes see. I think you need to pick your subject carefully and use it conservatively. Picture one is without the Orton process applied, picture two is with it. I wonder if you have any observations or tips. So let's show you what Gary was talking about. If I flip back here, <clears throat> so this is picture one without the Orton effect. This is picture two with the Orton effect. But in essence, what's happening is there's a blurring, a slight blurring of a sort of haziness effect. Now, I recognize the effect. I have to say, I didn't know it was called the Orton effect. Um, so I, I did what anybody does and I went and Googled it. And that's fine. Um, Interest. So basically what happened is it's called the Orton effect because of a photographer called Michael Orton who uses it a lot and has kind of popularized it. Now he's he does it, he's done it much stronger than Gary's done it. Um, but it's also it's not it's not particularly a new technique, it's just a technique that he was applying to landscapes. We've seen similar kind of I've seen similar things done in uh, photography. In fact, I think you can go back to Hollywood photography he was trying to do a similar kind of effect um, 80 years ago, 70 years ago. Uh, the d Photoshop allows you to create it much more easily than, of course, doing it with negatives in uh, a dark room. But OK, let's talk about a little bit about what it is. So the best way of doing that, I think, is to I will show you. I'll show you briefly how it works. So let's take a photo. So here's a photo stream with a bit of waterfall. Autumn onset, late summer. Now, there's a particular reason I've chosen this photo, which will become clearer in a minute. So now there's a whole number of different ways you can play around with this in Photoshop. I'll just show you one version, which is one that I happen to know, which is relatively easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate the layer. And then what you do is you blur the second layer. Now, in your original um, darkroom technique, what happened was you would take two photos. You would take one photo where it's all everything's pin sharp and you would take a second photo which is basically out of focus now you can vary this and how much out of focus you want um it's going to depend entirely on the, the yours you know you can go to there and you can't really see anything for this i'm i'm going to put it roughly about that kind of blurred state then the next thing you do is you overlay it on to the first one and there's a number of different ways you can do this if I'm, I'm in Photoshop and there's a bunch of ways you can layer overlay one layer on top of another so darken multiply color burn linear burn light and screen a whole bunch anyway what I'm going for here is overlay now this has also made it a bit too dark so in between these I'm just going to use a levels layer and I'm going to take the middle layer and shift it up from one to roughly about two. And what we can see then, if I just group those two layers together. So this is the effect. So what's happening here, as well as the colors becoming a bit richer, what you might notice is there's this sort of glow to everything. Well, not quite everything, most things, or rather the light things. So, where you really notice this glow is in the highlights. Um, and that's a key thing here, Gary, to, to, to understand. So that kind of glow kind of feels, it makes it much more dreamy in a way. Now, you can uh, increase the strength of that effect or decrease it if I... Yeah. Hold on, undo that. Let's just drag the group. So from there, I can nudge it a little bit. I can make it very strong. I've got it pulled up to, to full so that you can kind of see it. But where you have it on there is a matter of personal taste. Certainly going and looking at Michael Orton's pictures, he took this effect and ramped it up massively. Um, 
Now, the key thing about this is that the place where it has the most dramatic effect is in the highlights and not in the shadows. So if you've got an area of the photo which is being hit by dappled sunlight, then it becomes, that's the bit that's gonna hit it. If you've got an area, even on a kind of dull day, but maybe it's, you've got a damp bit of grass or something, you've got a little tussock over here, or you've got a bit of wet stone, where it's catching the light more, those are the bits that will glow. But you have to be kind of selective about it, because if you have a great big field and it's glowing, it's kind of overkill. It, what you're really wanting to do is get the select areas of it. So if we flip back, well, OK, let's, so let's go back to your picture here then, Gary. Um, let's open that with Photoshop. Now, the problem we have here is that there isn't really the light isn't there to maximize the effect of this. It, the, the best thing to have done here would have been to take, in this, take this photo on a sunny day or even better, sometime near the golden hour when the sun was low in the sky. And then if the light was catching the edges of the gravestones, if you were getting long shadows and light streaks across the grass, then those are the ones that would be glowing. But instead, what happens with this is if we create exactly the same effect. So what I will do is just filter, um, add the same blur, Oops, put it down a little bit. Um, and again, just take that levels in between, drag that up to about two, and where were we? Overlay this. Now this is slightly stronger than the one that you, you did, but you can see what happens here Oh, that's looking very, it's looking even dark. I might need to, the, we've lost the, the shadows somewhat in here. Uh, maybe I just need to pull that up. Hmm. It is more difficult to find the optimum place because there's a lot more shadow in this, but then where it is light, you've got all this grass and all this grass here is kind of too much. At this point, we've lost... I mean, I can understand, you know, maybe you've gone for this, you've got a slightly darker feel because you're going for a sort of slightly moodier, melancholic sense because it's gravestones. But we've not really got a place for that autumn effect glow to latch onto because the primary points of this photo are the gravestones. But the gravestones aren't really getting the effect. What's getting the effect more than the gravestones is the grass. And the grass isn't the point of the photo. So this is this is really, is, you know, one of the things I'm always talking about, which is understanding what's the point of the photo. Once you understand the point of it, once you understand the story you're trying to tell, then all the editing effects you do are there to emphasize that story. So if your story is about melancholic gravestones, if your story is about shape and line, depending on where your emphasis is, how is the light helping you to achieve the effect you want? How is the crop helping you achieve the effect you want? How is the angle of the camera helping you to achieve what you want? And then once you've got your photo and you take it and you place it into Photoshop or whatever other editing program you use, how is your editing helping achieve the effect you want? And we've got sometimes we do have to be really careful that there's a particular effect which may seem like a fun effect and it's a quick fix. You click this button and it does it for you. But an effect can very quickly become, can feel a bit stale. It's a bit like when HDR and there was a, when this when this effect started, there was a big habit of ramping it up, overcooking, really, making it sort of so that you almost kind of reeled from it. Another example is uh, selective color or spot coloring, where you pick just a particular color in a photo and you black and white everything else. But then maybe, you know, in the wedding photos, it's the classic, the red rose, when everything else is in black and white. The problem is, is after a while it becomes absolutely done to death because everybody's doing it. And if 
the only thing that's really keeping your photo elevated is a Photoshop effect that anybody can replicate, replicate then it's not really doing you any favors. You need to have a stronger photo underneath it. Then sometimes maybe things like spot color or things like the Orton effect or things like, you know, HDR can um, really emphasize and, you know, add to the impact of the photo. But you've got to make sure that you're using the right effect for the right photo. And in this case, I don't think that the Orton effect is playing in your favor because it's the grass that gets it all rather than the gravestones. And to get the gravestones, what you really needed was to have the light, maybe a streak of sunlight or moonlight. That would be harder to get, but certainly sunlight sort of hitting the corners or the edges of the gravestones. The real point on this is about getting the editing effect you want, you want in order to emphasize the story you want. Actually, I know what I was going to do. I will come back. I'll come back again a sec. What I want to show you is how the effect ended up in a kind of lighting. Um, when I was talking about portraiture, I said that the effect was used then. And I can show you very quickly that notion of a kind of Hollywood lighting as such, where we, use, where we do exactly the same thing. And what I'll do here uh, is we'll take just this little photo of my daughter. This was taken eight years ago. She's uh, a young woman now. She's when she was in her teens. This is my daughter Meg. Just playing around. Quick photo. I've got, I think it's a two light setup. Yeah, it looks like there's a main light coming in from the right here. And then I've got a light coming in over the shoulder to the back here, which is catching a little bit of edge here. Now, what I was trying to do here, I remember taking this photo while I was playing around with lighting and editing to try and get a sort of slightly Hollywood-esque kind of photo. So the, the first thing you want to do is turn it to black and white. So I'll just, um, first of all, let's just crop it in a little bit. There's a little bit of shadow down the bottom here, which I don't really need. Pull that in a little bit. Um, yeah, that'll do. Okay. so into camera raw uh, as the shortcut um, add a little bit of vignette around it and uh, black and white it so take the saturation pull that down looks a little bit dark I'll just hit auto there um, okay I'll bring the exposure up a little bit take the highlights down a little bit more and there we have roughly a kind of a very quick black and white photo version from there to there but the interesting bit, and this is what I wanted to show you, was if I duplicate that layer and now I blur it in exactly the way we were going to do it before. So I blur that. Let's take that up a little bit more, something like that. Um, and then I go to overlay. Now, again, dark, so a little bit dark. So I'll just put a levels bit in between and bring a little bit up out, out of the shadows like that. So now what you can see is that glowing effect onto a portrait. Um, I'll just group those together. So we've gone from that to that. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Now, I mean, one of the other effects is essentially the old um, Vaseline on the lens or uh, taking a, a, a stocking, a lady stocking and placing it over the lens as well to create a sort of dreamy soft focus effect. But what you can see here is that again it's having the most effect where the light is is at its brightest, where the light is catching the hair, where the light is catching little bits of skin. Each of these sort of highlights appears to be glowing. And that extra glow, you know, we, we do and that glowing on a black and white portrait we tend to recognise as very much a kind of you know, Hollywood style, you know, 30s, 40s style of photo. Um, you know, this is done in 30 seconds, just muck it, it around quickly. Obviously, you would play with it more if you really want to go for that effect. But as a quick example, so that's just to sort of go back and emphasize what I was saying about earlier, which is uh, the Orton effect is essentially taking this effect, but then applying it to landscapes. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that with, you know, there are... <laughs> 
you know, the only rules with photography are, does it work? Do you like it? If it works and you like it, then that's fine. Um, there isn't a right or wrong. You, of course, there are purists who will say it can only be done one way rather than another, but, you know, it, yeah, it's a matter of taste. Anyway, I did just want to show you that because I thought it was kind of interesting just to let you know that you can apply that kind of effect in whatever way you want. If you found this useful, let your friends know and hit subscribe.